everybody. I'm Lilac from Lilac Birthday Entertainment. Very excited to be bringing you this course about how I do the five foot tall giant balloon dolls. Uh, these are very popular for gender reveals and at the party the client can pop the belly and either pink flowers or blue flowers can fall out or feathers or whatnot and reveal the gender of the baby. It's really fun and different. And what's also fun is the doll can remain standing if you make it right after the belly pops and so she gets her figure back. I also do these as a wedding balloon, so giant bride and giant princesses. So let's get started. First, watch lessons one and two, and then check your email for the supplies list with all the brand names and where to buy them. It's going to come to you from lilactheclown at yahoo.com. Let's talk about equipment and doing this sculpture in a way that's physically comfortable. I don't recommend a hand pump for this whole thing. At best, if you use a hand pump, you're going to be really sore by the end. The one that is a must in my book is a floor pump. This is my filbert. For the big parts of the sculpture, you really need a floor pump because so much air goes into it. And if you use an electric pump, it's going to start to heat up the air. And not only will you have the larger balloons popping during the sculpting, but the integrity of your sculpture is going to be compromised so that even after you deliver it, it's much more likely to pop. You can use a combination of two for physical comfort. Maybe your back isn't always terrific and you don't want to do this for absolutely everything. You don't want to use a filbert. Well, for the smaller parts, you can use an electric pump. This is a Qualitex. I really love it. Another really good brand for that is Legenda. If you only want to invest in one pump for this sculpture, for your physical safety and comfort, I would say it has to be a floor pump, such as a filbert. The other nice thing about a floor pump is you can use it as a meter. So I figure out how many pumps it is to get to a certain length, and then I know using it like a meter, that many pumps gets me to that length. So rather than blowing it up, measuring it, finding it too long, taking a little air out, then measuring it, it's much nicer to use your pump as a meter, and that works really well with this particular one. Some of the balloon stuffing in this course is a little tricky, and here's how to handle that. Get the balloon onto the chopstick, then stretch it. So it's got a rigid structure there, and when you insert it into the other balloon, it doesn't just collapse, and you can get it pretty much all the way. Okay. Then you take out the chopstick. And then the next step is going to be to blow up the one that's inside. So make sure you don't stuff it all the way in there where you can't access it anymore. That's the end of lesson one. I hope you enjoyed it. Next up in lesson two, we're going to be covering color matching, color fundamentals, and opacity. And you're going to be getting your full list of all the different supplies, specialty shapes and sizes, and exactly where you can buy them. Then in lessons three through six, we're going to give you all the instructions and details you need to build the entire doll from the bottom up to the top, including stuffing the belly. And no worries, if at any point you get really stuck, you can get individual support, troubleshooting, um, individual attention in a private online lesson. They do cost money, but as long as I'm not retired yet, I'd love to make myself available for that. I do them over Skype and FaceTime and Google Hangouts, so it's a live video lesson where I can see what you're doing and help you troubleshoot it. 